Hi there, you are listening to Adept English, and this is a Listen and Learn podcast. My name is Hilary, and I created this Listen and Learn method to help you speak English fluently. It's much more enjoyable if you learn English in the way that your brain naturally wants to learn. I live in the United Kingdom. I'm a native English speaker, and I love helping the 100,000 students who listen to us every month. Every week, we give you two English lessons in the form of podcasts. So listen to Adept English. You'll be on your way to speaking fluent English in no time. Hi, and welcome to this latest podcast from Adept English. This is our Monday podcast, and therefore it's slightly longer than our Thursday podcast. But we put out two podcasts every week so that you can practice your English language understanding and using this improve your fluency. One of the things which can be difficult when you come to understand English is accent. Accent is spelt A-C-C-E-N-T and it means the way that you speak, the way that you pronounce words especially when it's different to the standard way of saying the words, the standard pronunciation. And it's usually to do with where you come from. In the UK, there are lots of regional accents. So some British accent practice is a good idea. If you listen to Adept English regularly, you'll be used to my voice and my way of pronouncing things. Yet my accent isn't quite standard English. I'm from the north of England, so I've got a slightly northern accent. It's not very strong because I was only 18 years old when I left the north of England. So now I've got more of a general English accent. So don't worry if you sound like me because you listen to Adept English a lot. People from the UK will be able to understand you well. My accent is only noticeable on certain words. So I say bath and grass with a short A sound in the middle. If you're from the south of the UK, you would say bath and grass. But that difference is not enough to mean that people don't understand you. However, some regional accents can be very strong. And some are difficult even for English people to understand. When I say regional accents, regional means they come from a particular region, a particular area. So some British accent practice, practice at understanding certain British accents, will be helpful to you in your learning. So the accent I'm going to look at today is the Scottish accent. So here is an example of a man talking with a Scottish accent. There are a number of Scottish accents, um, but just let's go with a general one. I've just chosen this from YouTube and he is talking about salmon fishing. He's standing by the side of a river watching another man who is learning to fish for salmon. So fish, F-I-S-H, are animals which swim in water and which we sometimes catch and eat. So the verb for catching fish is to fish and salmon, S-A-L-M-O-N, is the kind of fish here and salmon live in rivers and the Scottish actually are famous for producing salmon. So the Scottish man is standing by a river watching one of his students learning to fish and he's asked, how's this person doing? This person who is learning to fish for salmon And this is the Scottish man's reply. See how much of it you can understand. And how do you th- how do you think Buzz's doing? He's doing very well at the moment, actually. Um, he just needs to slow things down just a little bit, and he just wants to take his time on his forward cast. We'll have him by the end by the end of the morning. We'll have him all that'll be sorted out. Like, but the secret is is give the people their space. Let them get in the river. Let them fish. Let them enjoy the fishing. Let them fuel the rods. And don't be on their case all day, like. I can soon sort it out. This takes five minutes. So, I don't know how much of that you understood. At this point, you may want to look at the transcript, 
the written version of this podcast, which, as always, you can find on our website at adeptenglish.com. The transcript may help you, but British accent practice is difficult, so we could break this task of understanding down a bit more. If I read out the transcript, if I read out to you what the man with the Scottish accent is saying, first of all, it may be easier. Then, when I've done that, I'll run through any vocabulary that's difficult, or that may be difficult. Then, when you play the podcast through a second time and listen again to the man speaking, I think you'll understand some more. So, here is what he said, but see if you can understand better, with my accent, which you've heard before. So, he says, he's doing very well at the moment, actually. Um... He just needs to slow things down just a little bit. And he just wants to take his time on his forward cast. We'll have him by the end, by the end of the morning. We'll have him. All oh, that'll be sorted out. But the secret is that you give the people their space. Let them get in the river. Let them fish. Let them enjoy the fishing. Let them feel their rods. Don't be on their case all day like... I can soon sort it out. This takes five minutes. There's a perfect example. Only been fishing for the last 20 minutes and look at that. Perfect anchor point. Perfect loop going across the river. So maybe you could understand that a little more easily. Just some vocabulary to understand here. He says, he's doing very well at the moment actually. He just needs to slow things down just a little bit. So the man's commenting on the other man's progress in learning to fish. And as often with any new skill, it's a good idea to go slowly. He then says he just needs to take his time on the forward cast. So if you imagine someone fishing with a rod, that's like a stick and a line. So a thin piece of rope or cord with a hook on the end. Exactly what you use to catch fish in a river. The forward cast refers to how the man throws the line into the river. If you've ever fished, you'll know that how you cast, how you throw the line is important. So the forward cast just means how the man is throwing the line forward. And forward just means in front of him, in front of himself. The next part is difficult because the man starts a sentence and then appears to change his mind and says what he means another way. So he says, we'll have him. By the end of the morning, we'll have him. It sounds as though he's going to say, we'll have him fishing really well. But instead of saying this, the man says, all that will be sorted out. So the meaning is the same. The verb to sort out in English is something that we use quite a lot. Usually if you sort something out, it means you solve the problem. You make the situation okay. He then says... The secret is that you give people their space. Let them get in the river. Let them fish. Let them enjoy the fishing. OK, so that's like any good teacher. Let the person learning have some space. Let them discover and learn for themselves. He then says, let them feel their rods. Don't be on their case all day like. So firstly, let them feel their rods. The rod is the part of the fishing equipment, which is like a stick. So we would talk about a fishing rod. So the man is saying, let people get a feel for the rod. Let them get used to how the fishing rod feels. And he says, don't be on their case all day like. The verb to be on someone's case means that you're speaking to them all the time, reminding them of their errors, nagging them if you like. It's the opposite of give them space to learn. So it's quite a common phrase to be on someone's case. If I would like my daughter to tidy her bedroom, which is a horrible mess sometimes, it's necessary for me to be on her case. But if you're learning something and you're really interested in it, the worst thing is to have someone on your case. You need space to be left to learn. So don't be on their case all day like. What about the word like at the end of that sentence? It's just an expression that people use. It's very colloquial. You wouldn't hear somebody say that if they were reading the news. 
but sometimes people add expressions like this to their sentences. It's like the word well, when people go, hmm, well, doesn't really mean a lot, doesn't add a lot of meaning. So not just British accent practice then, but also recognising colloquialisms that English speakers use, like, like. The man goes on, I can soon sort it out, it takes five minutes. So that's probably easy to understand. I think he means that if anyone has a question or a problem, he can advise. He can teach them really quickly. For the last couple of sentences, just picture the scene or go and have a look at it on YouTube. The man is standing talking by the river and one of his students, one of the people learning to fish, is standing right in the river, up to the tops of his legs in the water, but casting his fishing rod really well. So the man is talking now about how quickly it's possible to learn to fish like this. He says, there's a perfect example. Only been fishing for the last 20 minutes and look at that. Perfect anchor point, perfect loop going across the river. When he says perfect anchor point, he's talking about how the man has positioned his feet, how he's firmly standing in the river as if he's anchored. He's not going to be pushed over by the water. An anchor, A-N-C-H-O-R, is what you use to secure a boat. It's like a metal hook. So no metal hook here, but the use of the verb to anchor means to fix firmly. So the other man has fixed his feet firmly in the river, as if he's anchored. The Scottish man then comments also, Perfect loop going across the river. Perfect means no errors, no problems. And a loop? Well, here he's talking about the shape that the line makes when it's cast, when it's thrown. A loop is almost a circle in shape, but it's the shape made when a piece of rope or cord, here fishing line, crosses itself. So he's really commenting on the way that his student is fishing really well after only 20 minutes. What's really important about this piece is not so much the vocabulary, though I think we've covered some useful words. The purpose here is more to give you some British accent practice with the Scottish accent. So now hopefully you've understood the meaning of what the man is saying. You've heard me say it and we've run through the vocabulary. Now it's time to play this podcast again, possibly several times, and listen to the recording of the Scottish man again. See if you can understand what he's saying this time. It will mean that you've had some good British accent practice and that if you meet someone with a Scottish accent, you'll be more prepared. Good luck. Let us know how you find this podcast, whether it's helpful and if you want us to do more of these with different accents. If you go to the transcript, you can find the link to the video on YouTube as well. Enough for now. Have a lovely day. Speak to you again soon. Goodbye. That's the end of this podcast. Don't forget to visit our website for other podcasts. You can sign up for our free seven-day course. And if you're really serious about learning English, Course 1 is ready for you to buy and download. Adept English, helping you become fluent in English.